Okay, so we're continuing with differential equations, and we are now on about to start exact differential equations. Okay. Okay. Solving exact differential equations requires partial derivatives. If you've already been through MAM 2083, you should be familiar with them. Okay. I think this is the only application of partial derivatives in this, in this course, I think. Anyway, the partial derivative of a function, f of x1, x2, xn, of more than one variable is written partial f, partial xi, or fxi, and being, being calculated by holding all the other variables constant and differentiating, differentiating with respect to xi. Okay. And you generally, we're not going to need the xi, you know, x1, x2 to n, we're just going to need x and y. Okay, so the x1 will be x and the x2 will be y. So an example, let f of x and y, f of x, x and y be x squared y plus y cubed minus x. This is a function of two variables, x and y. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is 2xy minus 1. Okay, because you assume, you take, you imagine y is constant, and then you differentiate this with respect to x. You bring down the 2, you get 2x, and then there's a y. You bring down the 3. No, the y is constant, so this is like a y cube, that's just a constant term, so that's just zero. We have minus x, so the derivative of minus x is one. Minus, the derivative of minus x is minus one, so you have two x, y minus one. Then to df dy, now you're imagining that the x is a constant, and you differentiate in terms of y, so you get it with x squared, uh, and three y, three y squared, that's just constant, so that goes away. So you have x squared plus three y squared. We call a differential equation m as a function of x and y plus n a function of x and y times dy dx equals zero. An exact different differential equation is the partial derivative of m with respect to y equals the partial derivative of n with respect to x. And now what's actually going on really is that this thing is exact when you have something like, it's like fx plus fy dy dx equals zero. Okay, that's really what we have. And then this condition is just this condition. Okay? The partial derivatives in either order, the second partial derivatives in either order are equal to each other, right? Um, which needs, that needs to be true if f, x, if f really is, exists, does exist, and these things really are derivative, these things really are partial derivatives of f. Uh, this and this fx plus fy dy dx. Really, that's actually can be thought of as fx the x dx plus fy dy dx equals zero. Okay, so dx dx that's just one, right? Derivative of x with respect to x is one, right? Okay, but this fx. Remember, this is uh, fx. That's another notation for partial f partial x. Okay, so really, this thing can be written as d partial f in terms of x, dx dx, plus partial f in terms of y, dy dx equals zero, right? Now this whole thing, this whole thing really, that's just the derivative in terms of x of f of x and then y as a function of x. So you're differentiating in one variable. So in this thing, it's this thing is not this thing now here, this d's, these d's, they're not partial derivatives. So it's like you're differentiating this whole thing in terms of just the one variable x, but you're not holding the y constant. You're, you're thinking of the y as a function of x, okay? Oh, sorry y of x is equal to 0, OK? But if that, if that derivative is 0, that means that f of x, if the derivative is 0, that means that the thing itself must be a constant, right? OK. So you see that's what's going to ha happen here. Um, OK, so we have this thing which you should think of as being fx, 
fy, and it's exact if fxy does equal fyx. And then if, it, if that's the case, then you say, you know, the m is the fx, you see? That's the fx. That's another notation for fx. Partial derivative of f in terms of x is another notation for fy. So you look for a function f, okay, like that. How do you look for that function? You, you differentiate both parts in terms of, you differentiate the f in terms of x, you differentiate the, the, you differentiate the f of x, sorry, you differentiate the partial derivative of f in terms of x with respect to x, you differentiate the fy with respect to y. Sorry, not differentiate. You integrate the fx with respect to x to get f, and you also integrate fy with respect to y to get f. Okay, let's just actually see an example now, which will clear things up a lot, probably, if you're confused at the moment. Okay, so solve this thing. So first we check whether or not it is exact de. Okay, now, how do, you, how do you check? So it's important to know how to check if something's exact de, but you actually don't need to do it to solve an exact de. Okay, so you check by saying, okay, well, I'm hoping that this is an fx and this is an fy. Okay, I'm hoping that fx is 3x times xy minus 2. I'm hoping that fy is x cubed plus 2y. Okay, because if, if, that really, if, the, if things are like that, then I can integrate both. Okay, now, if you want to check to see whether the thing really is exact, it must be the case that fxy equals fx, fyx, right? So you, first of all, you calculate fxy by differentiating fx in terms of y. So then what's that going to happen? What can happen to that? This thing is going to be written as 3x squared y minus 6x, right? So derivative of, of that in terms of y is just going to be 3x squared. Then the fy, derivative of that in terms of x is going to be 3x squared, and the, the y is constant. So yes, so this does equal fxy. So this thing is exact. Okay. So there is some function f that has these partial derivatives. So now we find it by integrating the fx in terms of x. So the, the fx, 3x squared, oh, sorry, fx, 3x squared, y minus 6x, integrate that in terms of x, what do you get? It's going to be, it's going to be x cubed y minus 3x squared, right? Plus then some constants. But the, because we're integrating, because when we go from f to fx, we're differentiating, it's a partial derivative, we'd be differentiating with respect only to x, holding the y constant. The constant here is actually a function of y, right? It can contain y's as well as numbers. Okay. Now we do the, now we use the fy, and we integrate that with respect to y. So then you're also going to have f equals, so the integral of x cubed with respect to y is x cubed y. The integral of 2y is y squared. Okay, and now the constant here can have x's in it because we, when, you get, when you go from f to fy, you hold the x's constant. And now you can see that for both of these equations to be true, f is going to have to be x cubed y minus 3x squared plus y squared plus a constant which just has a constant of, of only numbers, right? So what we're saying basically was that this fy was actually equal to y squared plus c and this, this, this g of x was actually equal to 3x squared plus c. Okay. Oh, minus 3x squared plus c. Okay. Um, so that's the f. Okay. Is that what they get? They uh, get x cubed. Oops. They get x cubed y minus 3x squared plus y ds. Okay. Now, remember I said that where does this uh, exact equation come from? It comes... It's, it's like it has this form, it comes from here, it comes ultimately from the derivative in terms of x, the ordinary derivative, so holding, not holding y constant, this derivative equaling zero, which means that the original function must equal c, some constant. So 
we've, found, we've, found, we've now found f, we found it to be this, right? So what must be true is that this f must equal some constant, right? This f, the f must equal some constant so that its derivative, this derivative, which is the exact equation, is equal to zero. Now, there's two constants here. You don't need, it's a constant here and a constant here. You don't need both of them. Just absorb them into one, stick them on the other side. Stick together over here. Okay. Now, this is the solution. This, this equation here implicitly defines y as a function of x. Okay. And often, that's as far as you can go. You often cannot solve beyond this. Okay. Here, look, it says the solution to our exact DE is the implicitly, implicitly defined curve x cubed y minus 3x squared plus y squared plus c equals 0. Well, whatever. I put this here on the other side. doesn't matter. The constant c may be determined by a condition like y of a equals b, like an initial condition like y of 0 equals 1 or something. Geometrically, the solution is a level curve generated by intersecting a plane with the surface z equals f of x, y. Oh, never mind that. Okay, that's talking about how it's, uh, it's this derivative being 0. Okay. If we wanted to, we could actually solve this a little bit. So you generally don't have to, but this is a, this is a quadratic, right? So let me now put this back over here, like this, okay? Let me now let me solve this quadratic. It's a quadratic in y, right? It's, it's actually y squared plus x cubed times y minus 3x squared, uh, I'll just take it plus c, plus c equals 0, right? Okay, so the solution will, will, will be given by y equals minus b, so that's minus x cubed, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be x to the 6, minus 4 times a times c, minus 4 times a times c, 4 times a times c, so c is, c is, is going to be is like c minus 3x squared, a is 1, all over 2 times a, so that's just 2. Okay, so this is going to be what? Minus x cubed over 2, plus or minus, so there's saying there's more than one solution, 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus. Uh, divide both of these, divide this uh, thing by 2, you're going to get what? The square root, square root of bringing the 2 inside of x to the 6 over 4, because I've brought the, I've brought the, you know, actually, you know what's nice to write this now, actually, as x cubed over 2, all squared, right? Okay. Minus, and the 4 gets divided, so, away, so then you just have plus 3x squared over here, and you have minus a constant there. Okay, so this actually now is the function, well, there's two branches of the function, and it's only going to be it's not going to be defined for all x because sometimes depending on what the c was this uh, thing inside here might come to something negative and then the function wouldn't be defined at that point but this now gives us the function it can give us the function in term the function explicitly defined y of x right this is an explicit definition of a function so this is the explicit definition of the function whereas this is an implicit definition of the function sorry not that whereas this is an implicit definition of the function y in terms of x okay um, I think I will leave it there, and then we will do these examples, these two examples, in, a, in another video. Okay. Um, yes, I think one thing I want to note is that the first step we did, or that they did, the said we must do, was we checked whether or not it's an exact TE, right? Now, if you actually, if you didn't bother doing that, and you just wrote down, oh, this is fx, this is fy, and you then integrated, you would have found that you, you know, you'd get an f, in this case, because it is exact, and so you'd be fine. You wouldn't need to have, had, you wouldn't need to have check, checked. And if you did this, you got these two f's, and you found that there was no way of making, of choosing an f and y and a g of x to make it work, right? Then you would, then you would know, oh, it's not exact, right? Um, so this check is actually, when you're actually solving something, this check is unnecessary. Because when you integrate to try and find the f, if you succeed, then it was exact. If you don't succeed, then it wasn't exact. I mean, if you're worried about whether or not you are really looking at these properly, 
then you can go back and check does fxy equal fyx, but otherwise there's really no need to do this check because the integrating itself is a check. Okay.